All right, guys. Welcome to week 10 <laughs> of the, the challenge. Yep. Um, this week was a fun week. We started off with how to survive your social life, which is a pretty huge I'd say pretty huge part of everybody's challenge when they even start this journey Um, because it's a big limiting factor. I know for me personally, like, you know, it's not really fun to go out to social gatherings and, you know, have to use a whole lot of willpower. True. So, you know, through the whole challenge, we have really tried to coach you guys in you know into a healthy relationship with food and that means a healthy relationship with food in social situations as well so where there's like guilt associated with you know if you fell off the wagon for a weekend or you're just mad that you can't have cake or something like that um we hope that you know the whole 80 20 lifestyle is kind of um you know, settled in well with you guys. So you understand that, yes, social situations are always going to be there. There's always going to be something to celebrate. There is birthdays every single month. There's a baby shower. There's a wedding shower. What, Whatever. And the, Tying your shoes correctly. Yeah. Going potty. What, yeah. Um, smiling enough in a day. Yeah. I mean, not he had a bad day. day. Yeah. Didn't hit their, didn't hit their brother day. day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, this, and the other thing is in the South... We will, we reward everything with some type of food right. or with sugar, like or you make yourself feel bad. better. Good, yeah, good, good or, or bad. good or yeah. bad. So it's like, it. like you said, it's like birthday, <laughs> birthday cake. You go to a funeral, <laughs> they have some type of you know sweet that's over there or whatever. And then in the south, we have sweet tea. So like you're saying, there is always, always, always going to be drained. an event of right. some type that's yes. coming up. Always. So you have to. You ha- I mean, if you're if you're like, I want to live a healthy lifestyle, I want to lose five to ten pounds, I want to get ripped, I want to whatever, right. you're going to have to exercise self-control in those situations. Right. And majority of them. We're not saying all of them. Yeah. Like, that's why there's the 20%. But you have to go back to, number one, what you're doing. Like, what is your goal? We've asked that a thousand, <laughs> hundreds yep. of times in this challenge. Because it goes back to that. Like, what is your goal? What are you working towards? Because if your goal is just to feel better, look a little better, then eating a piece of cake at a wedding or whatever it is on a weekend is not going to derail you. But now if you are looking to have, like, rip like Rambo abs, then, yes, you're going to have to do some social situation trade-offs. And see, like, I do – this is just me personally, so pro tip. (laughs) Pro tip is I rate events. Yes. Okay. I, like I rate that. I, like I rate that. them. So, let's say one of my friends has a birthday party. It's a ten out of a ten. I'm probably gonna right. eat the bad stuff. It's okay? a nighttime, whatever, or some big shebang. Like you know. your Christmas party. I know that right. those uh, cinnamon roll things gonna be there. Right. What's it? What is it? The bread pudding. The yes. Bi- the cinnamon roll and the bread, bread pudding, pudding thing, dude. Yes. Yeah. So that I'm going to eat that because I look forward to that every year, and yes. I only eat that like one time a year, so I'm going to eat it. Right. But then if like the next day somebody's like, "Hey, it's a one year old's birthday party." Right. Okay. At the one year's old birthday party on a scale of one to ten, that's get rated a one. Right. So if there's something there that I'm like, "Dude, that is so bomb!" Like Keller and I may split a piece of the cake. Right. Or whatever. There's. Yes. I'm not going to be like, "Oh, I did get a whole piece of cake." This, this, that. I'm so right. I'm going to rate them. So yeah. rate your events. I, I like that concept because, you like like we said, you're always going to have something to go to, and you don't have to partake Correct. in the treats in every event. And you're not going to die or, you know, feel, you know, bad because you didn't. Um, you'll actually probably feel pretty good. Yep. You know? yeah, I, never, I never eat anything at kids' birthday parties, and I never feel bad about it. Right. Like, I don't ever feel weird about it. You just saint. Just walk around. You saint you. I have my other moments, but at kids' birthday parties, just, I grab yeah. a bottle of water. Yeah. I drink it and I walk around and just chase kids around and kind of ignore right. the food. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Step away yeah. from the snack table. So how? So like, what would you? What tip or advice would you give for somebody like before they go to an event? Well, there's there's a couple of things that I do, and I think we've listed them in this this lesson. Was number one, eat before you go. Like a a, a birthday party that's usually at two p.m. on a Saturday. Like yeah. you can eat a snack and drink a ton of water before you go. Now, again, if it's like a family gathering or, you know, Sunday lunch or whatever it is that you get together, 
see if you can bring something that you can eat. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the CK recipes, a lot of people like, and you don't even have to tell them that it's a clean kitchen yeah. recipe. Don't even like mention it. Just bring something that you like to eat and then eat it. Um, if it's some Jenny, kind of potluck. Jenny just did that for the church. No, the church potluck, or the dinner on the ground, she brought a, a a dish that she knew she could eat, had a safe had a safe dish. Right. I approached it the other way. You're like, we, only have, we only have like three or four a year, and so that's a 20% thing. And like I walk in the room and like dinner on the grounds, yeah. home-cooked food that I never eat the rest of the year. I just attacked it on the grounds as part of my 20%. Right. It's a, and you know, and I pretty much walk in the room announcing it because where I go to church, everybody knows what I do. Yeah, you like it's, have I to can't like, hide. And so I'm like, hey guys, you didn't see the, the chicken <laughs> and broccoli and white rice I ate during the week all week to come smash this on right. Sunday. And so that's a spot I pick. Yeah. So you're saying that like your why for putting that 20% there, the reason why you did that is because you don't have access to that food all Correct. the time. Yeah, it's not around. Right. Yeah. And so. It's like a special chance to get to eat some of, you know, yeah. grandma's lasagna. Or, and you're not you know, doing it every no, weekend. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's the 20% we're talking about. Yeah. Majority of the time, you're crushing habits. You're doing, you know, what you should be doing. And then that 20% wiggle room. Because, you know, a big another big question is what kind of season are you in of life? You know, like holidays, people are more relaxed. And, you know, you're not necessarily going to be your leanest. And you're not going to be you know, trying to lose weight all the time. And you shouldn't be in a state of weight loss for like ever, you know, 20, like year round. That's just not how your body works. So yeah, there's going to be seasons where you, you kind of dig into that 20% a little more. Right. And then other times, like before summer, most people are like, okay, I'm ready to. And for some of our folks out there that, that are in that like weight loss mindset all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. I want you to just take a big breath for a second, <laughs> exhale and relax. And then if you've maintained through like a horrible season of life, let's say a bunch of drama and then mm -hmm. also through the holidays mm -hmm. and tax season and you've maintained and you held on, you're like, all right, now I'm about to shift back into weight loss mode. Please pat yourself on the back for yes. a second for maintenance yeah. because you have to, you have to reward yourself. At some point in time, you cannot continue to look at the scale, get defeated. Look in the mirror, get defeated. Yeah. You're like, I'm still stuck at that number of 200 pounds. Like for me, I'm stuck at 200 pounds. I can't get it to get to 198. You're not going to – don't let that define you and define right. your goals and all that kind of stuff. Control the things that you can control. You know, choose, choose wisely this. where you're putting your 20% mm -hmm. in. You know, what are you willing to trade off to, to get a little bit lower and just reframe your mindset as opposed to always be in the loose set and right. never patting yourself on the back for doing a dang good job. Right. And, and a lot of people in the challenge, like you have changed so much already. Like in the short 10 weeks that you've been doing this, you have changed a lot of your lifestyle habits. And so that drastic of a change in your mind, you're like, man, I should be like, ripped or like 20 pounds down or whatever it is because it's been a big change now i'm not saying that you know you shouldn't have great results but i want to you know give some perspective that you know the the weight loss like people put so much stock on that number when they're not looking at all the other non-scale victories you know and we've said that the the scale on the the number on the scale is just an a number and it's That's not right. supposed to define you but I know it's really hard for people that that have this goal number but you know through the challenge this challenge is not one where you're supposed to lose max amount mm -mm. you know like there are ways to drop more weight mass, faster yeah mass yeah. more weights faster but we could tell you to eat nothing I mean swear to god we could tell you to eat nothing but like the, the, I can't remember the name of the vegetables that are really high in water content, <clears throat> but it's like iceberg lettuce, celery, celery, cucumbers, and something else. We could tell you to only eat that, sprinkle it with salt and pepper, and to go walk for 60 minutes every day. <laughs> and guess what? You would lose all your muscle mass. Right. You would start to lose a lot of fat, and you, that number on the scale would plummet. Yes. And then... You would go to your first birthday party, eat some cake, and do some have some bad and habits. And then throw your head, hands up in the air and say, like, screw this water vegetable, yeah. you know, diet. And you would go. I'm going back to it pizza. It would start the bad binging cycle <laughs> yes. all over again. So the, the whole 
purpose of the 12 week challenge is to make everyone a solid level one. Yep. Okay. And everybody in the challenge, if you're keeping up with your habits, that's what you are. And you've had progress, whether you're a woman, which the, the range of weight loss for women is lower than guys. That's just nature. Um, yeah. Stuff that. Um, but the, for women, it's more around like there's a lot of people that have lost five pounds, eight pounds right now, you know, and that is a solid, like the eight pound is a solid number to oh, be yeah. losing. Um, I would say over the course of the whole challenge, the average is probably in that eight, maybe dipping into the 15 for women. But that 10 pound range, you know, but even if you're in that five pound range, don't count that as... A, like you're not doing something right because it's not about the scale it's more about the inches how you feel and stuff and honestly a lot of us crazy girls think we need to lose 10 pounds when we probably don't need to lose yeah 10 and pounds. if you if you lost five pounds over the 12 weeks and i think that's like 0.4 or maybe a little bit less than 0.4 <laughs> if you continue that and you did that for 52 weeks right. the whole year you lose over 20 pounds that's awesome Okay, mm -hmm. so I mean, come on, good. give yourself yeah. a pat on and, the back again. And if you started exercising, like yeah. doing the volt workouts oh, and yeah. stuff, if you started adding in volt and then some walking, that's like you know switching muscle pound, fat pounds for muscle pounds. Mm -hmm. So the scale isn't going to read that. There, I mean, there's just a whole numerous different factors that you have to take into account. But again, I'm going to bring it back to what this challenge is about. It's about a lifestyle. It is about what are you going to do habitually do for the rest of your life whether you're trying to lose or you're just trying to maintain and be healthy you know these habits don't change they'll change in degree based off of what season you're in but also you know it just depends on what you want you know it you don't have to be super duper lean to be healthy you know and I just want to like reel it back in of realistic expectations and a perspective of what we take in or, or what we truly hold, you know, as truth in the clean kitchen is that, you know, it's not always about ripped abs and, you know, all this stuff. It's more about what you do on a daily basis. Yep. So um, these lifestyle habits take a while to practice. They're going to take longer than 12 weeks to you know really become habitual you know you'll fall off the wagon numerous times yeah <laughs> I, like i was 36 ish 37 when i came to versus and started a boot camp and then i was probably 38 when i did clean kitchen the first time mm -hmm. so you're talking about removing like 37 years of brain training mm -hmm. of like growing up low-income family eating macaroni and cheese and fried chicken and breakfast in the way the school was a chocolate milk and some powdered donuts and you did that for years and that's ingrained you're trying to erase all that and retrain your brain it takes yes. it takes a little while like the expression is you can't go 10 miles into the woods and get out in five right it just doesn't work you're gonna mess up yeah proof i mean you mess up and you know it just takes practice and i'm just now getting into august will be my fifth year of working out with versus and this is the first year where I'm finally getting like a really healthy mindset of how to approach my food and not be a psycho scale person. Yes. Jamie slapped me in the head several times <laughs> and just kind of changing my goals to where they need to be and my mindset to where it needs to be, where it's a healthy focus and not a psycho focus. Right. Right. Like a race and I'm a, in a yeah. hurry. And if and, I don't or, get it, I'm a failure. And, and you're not good over, enough yeah. mm -hmm. and you're not lean enough and whatever. I mean, we, we all, the coaches, we have these same thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're not pointing the finger at anybody. It's just we want, we really, we want to shake ourselves sometimes too whenever we have those thoughts because I'll be like, what would I be telling somebody if they were telling me this? Mm -hmm. And I have to like coach myself yeah. or we coach each other, you yeah. know, talk each other off the psycho ledge. Um, because falling off the wagon in whatever, whatever you're, wherever you're at, if you have fallen off and you are looking at, oh, why get back on? Falling off is part of the process. That's where you learn. You learn how to stay on longer the next go around. Yeah, you didn't fail. You just learn what didn't work. Right, exactly. I mean, that's what you have to spin it that way. Right. You know, it's like you're chopping down a big ass, I mean, a big tree. Sorry. <laughs> you're, chopping, <laughs> you're chopping down a really big tree and you got to pick up your axe every day. And yes. there's some days that you just don't want to pick that thing up. And that's understandable. 
But yeah. you got to go out there and, and take a cut at it. The other way that I, I heard it was, the guy said <laughs> it's a big old pile of dirt. He's like, and some days you get a shovel, and some days you get a spoon. But as long as you're moving dirt, you're moving dirt. I right? like that. Right? Yeah. So you have yeah. to take that as as a perspective <laughs> on how to do this, you know, because like Matt said, it's five years. I've been doing this thing for 10. And right. like really honest to God, right now in this season of my life, yeah. I'm finally getting a really good grasp on it. Like yeah. me and Matt and I were talking about some stuff with nutrition this morning that's really clicking with us and working well. And I'm like, I want to slap myself. What did I do that 10 years ago? Well, it's because I was focused on something else. Right. You know, so the, the perspective, the season of mindset that you're in changes. Um, so, you know, just to wrap this this up, um, you know, just keep plugging away at those habits. You've got two more weeks left in this challenge to reach out to your coach, to ask questions. I mean, you're always going to be part of this um, Facebook group, but, you know, take this time to really, like, fine-tune or anything that you've ever wanted to ask your coach. They are at your, your fingertips. So, you know, take advantage of that. Um, Next week's going into week 11. You will turn in pictures in week 12, that Wednesday. Turn them in. Yes, turn yes, them please. in. No matter if you're like, oh, failed the whole tournament. No, you did not fail. If you did anything in this whole challenge, I guarantee you week one looks a whole lot different than true this week or t- week 12. So um, we will leave y'all there. Um, if you have any questions, just holla at us. Bye. That episode was fire.